Now it's time for this week's special guest. Former Director General of the BBC. Invented BBC Three, tabloid television and the Premier League. Thrown out of the BBC for sexing up the sexing up of the Iraq dossier. Chairman of the FA during England's worst ever performances. Owes everything to Roland Rat. It's Greg Dyke. Greg Dyke, thanks so much for joining us. All right. Let's start with this Bake Off business. Is this row a sort of a symbol of the bigger difficulties facing the BBC or just a load of nonsense over a cake show? Bit of both, I think. Bit of both. I, th I mean, the BBC couldn't win, could they? If the BBC had paid the money and kept the show, everyone would have said what a ridiculous amount of money to pay, and then doesn't pay it and it loses the show. Actually, I don't think it, I don't think it matters that much to the BBC. Why not? Well, because a lot of people watch it. Uh, all entertainment shows have their day. They go like that, don't mm. they? Mm. And uh, Bake Off going to Channel 4, I suspect, will lose half its audience, if not more. What about the bigger picture? It seems to many people that the Tories just have it in for the BBC and they just want to kill it with, like, a, a million paper cuts. Is that well, true? Well, there's been a... They've certainly cut uh, the revenue from the BBC for some years, but I'm not sure... I mean, the, the, the charter thing that's come out this week, uh, that doesn't really have damaged the BBC. I mean, the, the BBC needs... Uh, you, you can't keep taking money away and still get the same sort of service. But I think the BBC will be all right. Let's talk about the salaries business, yeah. forcing them to declare the salaries of all their on-screen talent. Do you think that's a bit unfair? Well, I'm, I've got a thing about this idea that no-one can earn more than the Prime Minister, you know, because... Mm. Because they say, well, no one can earn more than the Prime Minister. But you, if you look at the Prime Minister's salaries over a longer period, I mean, look how much Tony Blair has made since he hasn't been Prime Minister. Mm. Now, he's only made that because he was Prime Minister. Therefore, I think this idea that no one can earn more than the Prime Minister... I mean, if you leave the BBC, you get thrown out of the BBC, you don't earn much money after that. If you're Prime Minister, you do. Yeah. Um, personally, do I think it'll make a difference? Yeah, I think some, some talent will say, I don't want my salary published and therefore they'll leave. What good will it do for us to know, other than obviously we're all interested? Well, the, well, the, me, the press are interested. People like you are interested. Yeah, I'm interested. Because you'll be able to sit and say, you're, oh, look. You got a bit, you're interested. You'll see, think they get paid how much? Or you'll be thinking others, they're well, not being paid well, enough. Well, I, I knew how much they all got paid. And yeah. some of them I thought were overpaid and some of them were underpaid. You're right. Now, Greg, you have run some of the biggest institutions in Britain. So as far as we're concerned, your opinions carry more weight than most. And we're going to put them to the test now uh, when we play a game called No Likey, No Dikey. No Likey, No Dikey. Now, it's very simple. I will run some uh, issues past you and you simply say, if you like it, Greg Dikey Likey. And you press the green button. If you don't like it, you say, Greg Dikey No Likey and you press the red button. It really is as it's, simple it's, as that. It's an imaginative game, then. Yes. Uh, now, do you follow the rules? Uh, just about, yeah. Good, good. Uh, right, first up, Sam Allardyce is the New England manager. Greg Dykey likey or Greg Dykey no likey? No, Greg Dykey likey. Green button, please. Uh, so this was uh, the first appointment to be made after your tenure at the FA. You think they got it right? I, th I hope so. I mean, the biggest problem of the English team is not the manager. The biggest problem is we haven't got enough players to choose from. Were you happy to see an English appointment? It wouldn't have worried me if it had been non-English, as long as they were basically operating as managers in the English system. I think you need to... I think go and get someone who's never been here is quite difficult. But it wouldn't have worried me if they hadn't been English. Good stuff. Right. Presenters who whack their underlings for not bringing them their dinner on time. Greg Dykey likey or Greg Dykey no likey? No, no likey. No likey. Uh, what did you make of all that? I mean, you know, obviously it's very easy you can't, for people... You can't deal. You can't keep going with presenters who thump the producer. It's as simple as that. But do you think that was the straw that broke the camel's back? Or it, under, under your regime, would he have been gone immediately, irrespective of all the other complaints there have been in the past? Well, I tried... No, when I was there, I remember phoning him one day because he was going to go to another channel and persuaded him to stay. But I think all presenters, you know, you, they push it more and more and more and more. And in the end, uh, he pushed it too far. 
I don't think the BBC had any choice. They had to get rid of him. He'd had a hot, hot, tough day and no, no, the fella he, wouldn't get he'd his been, he'd, he'd been out drinking. OK. Right? He turned up several hours late, kept the helicopter waiting, as I understand it, <laughs> arrived, <laughs> and there's no hot dinner, so he thumped the producer. Mm. That sounds to me to be unacceptable behaviour. OK, that sounds open and shut. All right, lastly, uh, what happens in the 70s should stay in the 70s? Greg Dykey likey or Greg Dykey no likey? Well, I'll do both on that. OK. Right? Because... Um, I don't quite know what you mean, but I mean, if there were formats from the 70s mm. that you can revive and bring again and things like that, you know. Are you um, being served porridge? They did it recently, didn't yes, they? Yes, I thought, well, I never liked Are You Being Served in the first place. No. Uh, and I watched some of the, the remake and didn't like that either. Okay. So, um, you know, in the end, there are only so many good ideas. You know, and therefore, if you're reviving good ideas and turn to a new audience and a new time, that's okay. What about the culture, though, in the BBC behind the scenes that we found out so much about in recent times? I mean, how far back do these inquiries go? How deep should it go? Well, I wasn't there when, you know, when I, by the time I became director general, I'd never worked for the BBC, so I never did all those jobs where you find, find out everything. You know, yeah. you only, if you're going at the top, you never find out everything. Yeah. I never worked with Savile. I always thought he was a bit weird <laughs> as a presenter. We now know it was much more weird than that. Yeah. There's always been a culture, isn't there, of... I mean, I gave evidence to the woman who was doing the inquiry for the BBC, and I said, look, there's always been a culture whereby presenters are overprotected. Mm. You know, that they become the stars and everyone's got to look after them. And it's not surprising me that, that people have turned, you know, used the blind eye and the rest of it on certain things. Whether that, I think the cultures of the 70s are massively different to the cultures of today. Massively different. Uh, and therefore, I, I, I think there has to be a moment when you draw a line under this and say, look, we can't keep going back into these things.